being built for this has turned into some overused cliche that everybody wants to say about their favorite player or whatever. But Jackson State, in a literal sense, is built for this exact moment. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today's Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day, every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that wants to push things a little further every time? Ever wonder what's the next big adventure around the corner from you? Then take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. We'll wrap up today's episode with a look at a little HBCU versus HBCU postseason play. That's a rarity, but we got it this year. Prior to that, we look at the two women's basketball teams who made the NCAA tournament, Norfolk State, and why Diamond Johnson needs to be the leader for the Spartans in this one. But we kick it off with a bold statement, and really it's, it's actually just a fact. Jackson State is built for this. And like I said in the cold open, it's turned to this, this cliche of, oh, he's built for this. He's built for this killer instinct and everybody don't have it. So it's, it's like it's become overused. But I don't even mean it in that sense. I mean, quite literally, Jackson State is built for this because Jackson State has built their roster to make it back to the NCAA tournament and win this game. This specific game, I'm talking about 14 versus three, not 15 versus two, not 16 versus one. They have been thinking about this since the day that they lost to LSU in 2022. This is two years in the making, but it's not killer instinct. This isn't favorite player or anything of the sort. This is the way that Jackson State has constructed their roster. Now, I always say you create your roster to beat whoever you're trying to beat, whoever that top dog is. Everybody is aiming at someone. For Jackson State, they've dominated the SWAC for five years. The SWAC is trying to build teams to beat Jackson State. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that the Lady Tigers are beyond the conference, but the truth of the matter is when they start their season, their, their focus is not the SWAC per se. It's what's first, so it's the closest thing in their view, but their mind because they're so used to this, is the NCAA tournament. And they've built their roster with increased height because they felt like that's what they lacked. And I'm talking specifically about Coach Reed. She has a quote about this. But she feels like that's what the team lacked in 2022. So they're going into the same situation, a 14 seed going against a three seed. I do believe that they get a little bit more of a chance this year than they did two years ago. Mostly because a repeated reputation. We've seen it. They pushed LSU to the brink. It looked like they might have been able to come down with that victory. Like this is, and that's never happened before, by the way. A 14 has never beaten a three seed in the women's basketball March Madness. They felt like they had a chance. And then when Amisha Williams Holiday got into foul trouble and they had to take her out, the size was just too much. Let's listen to this. Ex well, I'm going to say it. So let me read, and you'll listen to this exact quote. From Coach Reed after that game, she said, I knew we did not have the height to match them inside. When Amisha William Holiday, Williams Holiday got into foul trouble, it did something to us. 
I wish I would have left her in and trusted her not to get her fifth foul. When you look at that, that is placing the entire hopes of a specific section of the floor on Williams Holiday. That's saying that once we took her out, we had no more size. And as great as she was, SWAC player of the year, ended up being a draft pick, I believe, to the Indiana Fever. You can't depend on one player to be your size the entire time. They either may need to rest. They may get into foul trouble. That like You need to make sure you have depth and height. So what did Jackson State go do? They recruited big, and you see that in today's roster. So let's look at some of the ladies on Jackson State's roster. Angel Jackson, defensive player of the year, 6'6". Daphne White, 6'5". She's out, though. Layla Walker, 6'5". That's three players who are bigger than, than Amisha Williams Holiday was. Now, granted, one's out, but you see the recruiting style, and now you have two. Of course, Angel Jackson is going to be the primary paint defender. That's going to be the person that you look at the most when talking about size and the paint. And I'm, stri I'm strictly looking at height. I'm not even looking at uh, weight or anything. Well, I'm simply looking at the height of them. The person I think they're going to have to compete with is Aaliyah Edwards. That's who they're going to have to go at when you're looking at their game against UConn this upcoming is Friday. So it's going to be tonight. When you look at it, Edwards is the one who's 6'3 and up. They don't have a lot of size there, especially not that they use a lot. And Jackson State went so far as to get bigger guards, right? You got Avent, she's six foot even. Bowler and Crump, they're six one. Like these are this is a big team when you look at Jackson State. This is not by accident. This is not by accident. I don't know if UConn will go into the paint because they shoot a decent amount of threes. Not a lot, but they're very efficient. And with a team that has built themselves to be stacked in height, maybe they try to lean on the perimeter a little bit, UConn does. But that'll be the chess match that is the game because with long, tall defenders at guard, you might be able to de defend the perimeter even better than you would have a couple of years ago. This is the exact moment they've been waiting for. In 2022, Jackson State was a four seed going up against number three LSU, and they lost that game. One of the reasons they felt they struggled and eventually lost was because of the height that LSU had on the inside, the size. So what do they do? Coach Reed says, I'm going to go out and I'm going to recruit some bigger girls. So when I tell you that Jackson State women's basketball is built for this moment, I'm not speaking on killer instinct. I'm not speaking on quality of the squad, even though those things do come into play. When I say that Jackson State women's basketball is built for this moment, I'm talking about the fact that after being a 14 seed, losing to a three seed, they went and recruited big. They got height 6'6", 6'5", 6'5". That's what we're looking at on the roster now. And now they're a 14 seed going up against a number three seed. This time it's UConn. And I can't help but feel like it's a full circle moment. And let's see if they can right that wrong of size being the reason that they lost in 2022. Speaking of a team that has never done this before, a 14 has never beaten a three, a 15 has never beaten a two in the opening round either. Norfolk State women's basketball is looking to be the first of their kind, and in order to do that, they're going to have to rely on Diamond Johnson to be their leader. This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. Hibernation is over, fellas. It's time to cut it down. Let it breathe. That's what it's time for right now. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in the below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped Lawn Mower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom just like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code locked on to get 20% off and free shipping. The fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads. You have one that is standard for just taking a little bit off the top and you have another one that lets you go wherever you want to go. It also features the dual LED lights. So let's say you, you're trying to trim up and the light ain't that good in the room. Ain't no problem with Manscaped. Go ahead and get yourself the 5.0 and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping as well. When you use the code, the locked on at manscaped.com, there's nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. And trust me, whoever you're friends with, 
will agree if you know what i mean now today's episode is also brought to you by game time game time is the official place this is the best place excuse me that i like to go for all of my last minute tickets i'm one of those people who I'm always going back and forth if I'm going to go to an event, especially when it comes to sports, because I want to make sure that my favorite player is going to play in the game. Game time allows me to be a little bit indecisive, allows me to be a little bit hesitant and not have to suffer any consequences. I still get the best prices and don't believe me. Go to game time. You'll be able to use it. And then if you find a better deal in the same section, in the same row, they'll give you 110% back on the difference. They'll pay you for finding a better seat. If that doesn't speak to the confidence that they have, I don't know what does. So download the Game Time app, create an account. If this is your first purchase, use the code Locked On and you get $20 off your first purchase. It's just that simple. Best place for all of your last minute ticket deals to games, concerts. Um, comedy shows, everything in between in your local area, maybe even March Madness. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you're checking out Locked on Sports today. It's the first of its kind, 24-7, all day, every day, live sports network on YouTube. You'll probably catch multiple schools who are in March Madness right now, but you'll never know if you don't go to Locked on Sports today and subscribe. Diamond Johnson will need to be the leader for Norfolk State in order for them to pull off the massive upset. When Norfolk State steps onto that court, let's not get it twisted. They will be underdogs. They should be underdogs. This is 15-2. to two. The gap is wide, right? And if they're going to do something that has never been done, because just like Jackson State is attempting to be the first 14 seed to ever knock off a three seed in the opening round, Jackson State, or excuse me, Norfolk State is also attempting to be the first 15 seed to knock off a number two seed in the opening round. These are two HBCUs looking to make history. And if Norfolk State specifically is going to do it, you're going to need Diamond Johnson to be the one that steps up. Make history, because in my opinion, I know that Diamond Johnson is a star, but I'm not speaking about star power. You got her and Kiera Wheel on the court. I think that they're going to have to be the ones who do the thing. But I'm not just speaking about star power. I'm not speaking about gravitating people towards you. I'm speaking about going to get a bucket. And it's going to have to be some tough buckets. You can kick it to Fields. You can kick it to Clark. Right? You can do those things if you're Diamond Johnson. You have great ability to facilitate. But you're going to have to go against some tough defense because those two are not the stars. When Stanford sits down and they start and they start the game plan for Norfolk State, they're going to look to take away Diamond Johnson and they're going to look to take away Kiera Wheeler. Now, it'll be Clark and Fields' jobs to make shots early in the game so that you know, or excuse me, so that they know they can't relax off of you. That'll be what their job is. Like, that's what they, they have to do. You need to make shots early, and then that will help out Diamond Johnson. That will help out Kiera Wheeler. But it's not their job to carry the team. It is on Diamond Johnson and Kiara Wheeler as stars, but I'm isolating Diamond Johnson specifically because she's been here before. That's why you have to go out. You have to get a bucket. You have to go out. You have to be the emotional leader. You are going to need to be the leader by example. You're going to need to be the leader vocally as well, maybe just emotionally, however that is, because we've seen the moment be too bright for people. And this isn't a Norfolk State thing. This isn't a Jackson State, Howard, Grambling, any of that. We've seen the, the moment be too big in, vari in a variety of sports. I've seen the moment be too big in a variety of moments, right, by big school, small school, whatever. I've seen the moment be too big frequently. You've seen that. So it wouldn't I, – I don't think that it would be terrible if Norfolk State, with a team of players who ain't been in this situation – found it to be a little bit too big of a moment. Diamond Johnson has been in five NCAA tournament matchups, four at North Carolina State, and then one at Rutgers. You have to rely on that experience to be the cool head. And you look at the Rutgers game. Let's read off some of the stats real quick from the Rutgers game. So 
in that one that she played, because they lost in the first round that year, she was a freshman. 13 points, two turnovers, three steals. The reason I point out the two turnovers is because she's extremely safe with the ball. If you're going to be the guy or the girl, right, the woman, you're going to need to be safe with the ball. You look at North Carolina State, she had a couple of double-digit performances. She was still relatively safe with the ball most times. She's going to be asked to do a lot more. So maybe she has four turnovers, right? You wouldn't want that. But I've seen one of the biggest things that I've seen in low seeds versus high seeds is the low seeds turn the ball over a lot. The low seeds turn the ball over a lot. And if you have Diamond Johnson as somebody who is primarily handling the ball, as somebody who's been here, somebody who can tell them, hey, don't get nervous, settle in. I'm going to start off getting the buckets, right? So one thing, I'm going to make this by myself real quick to kind of explain what I think this is as an analogy. So when we go to out, right, just go outside or whatever, I'm always telling my friends, I've told a couple people, I'm not the one who's going to get us live. I'm not going to start it off. But if you start it off, I'm going to be right there with you. I can follow your lead easily, but I'm not the fire starter. I need Diamond Johnson to be the fire starter. I need her to be the one who gets Norfolk State live, right? I need them to be, I need her to be the one who tells Norfolk State we can play with them because watch how I can play with them. She came from Rutgers. She came from North Carolina State. She's been in this moment every single year, except for last year because she didn't finish the season. But outside of that, she's played every single year in the NCAA tournament. Played at Rutgers, played at North Carolina State her first year, and then she was hurt in the second year, but North Carolina State made it that year too. So if she was around the team, the, the NCAA tournament is nothing new. Diamond Johnson has played in the in Diamond Johnson has played in the NCAA three years. Made the tournament with Rutgers, one game and was out. Made it the second year or the first year when she was at North Carolina State, but her second year in college, she made it four rounds deep with the Wolfpack. And then the third year, they made the tournament, but she was injured, so she might have been around the scene. She might not have. Either way, she has that experience to tell the team, this is how we operate. This is how they play. Watch what I do and then trust in yourself the way that you trust in me. I think that Diamond Johnson is going to need to be the leader, both emotionally and by example. She needs to show that she can play with them so that everybody else believes as well, too, or makes it easier for them to believe. And then also get them settled. These things are important. Now, as far as Kiara Wheeler goes, um, I want to see if that paint presence on the inside remains there. Um, I think she's going to have to finish. She's going to have to finish. She's not going to get easy buckets. She isn't. But she's going to have to finish through some contact. She's going to have to finish through some, some tall arms. That's what she's going to be required to do. And if she can do it, I think that game becomes a lot different because I don't believe Stanford's a huge team. So um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I checked the heights. So I don't think that they're a really big team. I'm looking at Kiara Wheeler and I'm looking at Diamond Johnson. Your stars have to be stars in moments like this. And let's see if they can become star or be stars on this stage. You're going to have a way bigger workload than you did at any of your other schools. And that's why the pressure is even ratcheted up for Diamond Johnson. Now, as you push forward, we have some HBCU versus HBCU combat in the tournaments, right? Not in the NCAA, but more so in the CIT, the College Insiders Tournament. So let's preview that as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by March Madness and Nissan. So those two are connected, and each week we are picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. Excuse me. These guys were <laughs> these guys were able to take it to the next level. And I will use Jackson State because they have been an absolute force, the top seed in the SWAC tournament and the team that has pushed it farther on a consistent basis than anybody else. That will make them kind of like the Armada. They're as hardcore as it gets. So it's no wonder that they've landed with the highest seed of any HBCU in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the most anticipated matchups going into this game. So when we'll talk about anticipation, I anticipate you going to take a look at the Nissan Rogue, 
Armada or the Pathfinder. And in order to do that, to make your next adventure as high as you can, go to NissanUSA.com. Go ahead and go to NissanUSA.com to push your limits even further with the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Armada, or the Nissan Pathfinder. As wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day, every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. We have a little bit of HBCU versus HBCU tournament play in the College Insiders Tournament. And I know this has only happened one time in the history of H or of the NCAA Tournament. I feel like it's probably never happened in the history of the College Insiders Tournament. This is the first time they've had the event since 2019. There are so many postseason basketball tournaments. It's kind of insane and difficult to keep up with them all, to be honest. You got the CIT, the NIT, the WNIT, the NCAA Tournament, Women's Basketball NCAA Tournament. You got the CBI, got the FBI, the CIT, the, the CIA, everything in between. Like, it's, it's crazy. You have so many. But in all seriousness, I think everything except for the FBI and the CIA is, is for real a tournament. And I don't think I've hit all of them. So uh, I think you got the BIT, the Basketball Invitational Tournament. Uh, like, they just introduced a new tournament that's supposed to replace the NIT in importance. It's it's kind of insane and it's kind of difficult to keep up with everything that they're doing these days. They're trying to expand a game that's already extremely expansive. But if it results in two HBCs playing against each other to try to make it to the tournament finals of this tournament, I'm, I'm okay with that. And that's what the College Insider Tournament has provided for us. It's Alabama A&M versus Norfolk State. And I personally appreciate the fact that it's a MEAC team versus a SWAC team because this doesn't happen as much. You see Hampton and North Carolina A&T, they often schedule some MEAC teams in the in the out-of-conference schedule part, right? Now that they're in the CAA, you still see that relationship of we're going to play you, we're going to schedule. like You still see that frequently, but you don't see as many MEAC versus SWAC games, and specifically – Norfolk State hasn't played a SWAC team all year long. So even in that tournament they had, I think they played Hampton. I think they were in that. Oh, no, I think that might have been Howard. I think it might have been Howard, and they were Hampton, North Carolina, a and and Texas Southern. But Norfolk State hasn't played any SWAC schools this year. So I think this is kind of cool because it's an unfamiliarity. It'd be one thing, like, imagine we just saw Morgan State versus Howard or Morgan State versus Norfolk State again. Like, I... That would be cool, and it'll have something to, to lean off of, but it's not as cool as a SWAC team versus a, a MEAC team to me. Um, so that's a nice twist. Also, this is a semifinal matchup, which means one of them has to go to the finals, and I don't care if it's Alabama a and I I don't care if it's Norfolk State. Doesn't matter to me because I just care about the fact that they're going to get that representation, get that love, right? Um, this tournament, strange to me, nine teams in the tournament, uh, Norfolk State had a double buy essentially, right? You had Texas Southern and Charlton State, I believe, having a play-in game. Oh, you have four teams in a play-in game to make it to the quarterfinals. Then you had teams who were already just in the quarterfinals and didn't have to play in that first round. And then you had Norfolk State who had a buy all the way to the semis. And then you had Texas Southern who had to play in the first round despite being better than Alabama a and I don't understand this tournament at all, I don't care to understand it. It's so many of them. Just to be honest with you, it's all kind of funky to me. So I guess Norfolk State got a double buy. Alabama A&M got a single buy. Regardless, the way they got here is Alabama A&M took a harder path. They had to go and beat Austin P. And they beat Austin P on their own home court. So they went on out there to Tennessee, took down the Governors. What a terrible name for a, a, a mascot. The governors, that's disgusting to me, right? That's the kind of nasty stuff we thought the Washington football team was going to name their 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 uh organization. Thankfully, they didn't. That would have been stupid. I wouldn't. The Washington delegates. I don't want it. That's terrible to me. Neither here nor there. Shout out to Austin P. Um, but Alabama AM went in there, they took down that team. And it wasn't overly competitive. Austin P had a 15 to 9 lead. About six minutes into the game, in about three minutes, three, four minutes, Alabama AM went on a 12, yeah, a 12 to 2 run. And from that point, they never gave the lead back. 
It didn't take long for them to get ahead. Once they got up by double digits, this, the lead stayed double digits. It, nothing really changed. It came down to nine a couple of times, once before the last minute and some change. This was a dominant victory by Alabama AM. and And you had Chad Moody, who was the rookie of the year. He had a career high, 24 points. So his second or his second, yeah, second 20 point game of the year. This is. This is going to be one that, for me, is going to be very important because you have a chance to see an HBCU win a tournament. And I don't know the last time that we've seen a Division One HBCU win a tournament. And I'm not just talking about the big dance, but just win a tournament in general. So we we'll recap that. I think the second semifinal match is on Monday. This game is on Saturday. So we'll recap this game and then also the final matchup at some point next week as well. So I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. The topics are beginning to stack up for next week. So I'm excited for that. We got another week of really good basketball to talk about and a special guest for you on Friday. Just a little bit of a tease as you move into the last week of March. I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. And for your second listen, make sure make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports today. And until next time we hear each other family. Take care. Stay blessed. Peace.